hello friends and welcome to my vlog and uh, my name is vivek narayan and i'm on I'm, i wanted to share my perspective after living in canada for 10 years on life in canada versus life in india so before i begin i wanted to share my story about uh, when i came to canada how my life has been right so i came to canada almost uh, 10 years ago I came here uh, and I did my MBA from Queen's University and after that I started working for uh, a bank as a business analyst in capital markets and ever since then you know I have been working in different banks and uh, you know my life in Canada has been okay so far uh, and I have uh, I would definitely say that yeah if uh, if I were to compare my own life in India versus Canada yeah Canada has been better for sure uh, and, but, but this is where I wanted to share my thoughts and I wanted to explain uh, you know how this can be very different for from individual to individual so when you talk about your experience in uh, Canada versus India you know you would be basing it on how your life was in India and how your life is in Canada it will be different for different individual so it completely depends on uh, you know how your life has been was in India and uh, how your life is in Canada so you know I will divide this into you know div I will talk about different categories here so let's assume that you know it, it depends on let's say that you're coming from a big city in uh, India such as Mumbai and let's assume that you are coming to Canada which is Greater Toronto area uh, you know most of the people come to Greater Toronto area what are the differences uh, which you will see and uh, uh, you know how if is your life going to be better in Canada so first and foremost let's talk about people who are doing really well so th there are different categories of people again some people might might be doing really well in India IT professionals let's say IT professionals who are making more than 30 lakhs in India you know their life I mean it depends it, it depends on non-monetary factors for them uh, people who are making like 10 lakhs yes for them if they are able to get a decent job in Canada their life might be better um, people who are in non IT professions and are doing really well they need to really check about their profession and make sure that they are able to make that kind of money in Canada based on cost of living here and uh, non IT professionals again who are not doing so well in uh, you know there can be non IT professionals who are uh, not doing so well in India so for them if they come to Canada and if they are able to get a decent job yeah their life is going to be better so it completely varies on what your life is in India versus what you can achieve here in Canada so you know the job part is the most important part because that's what is going to drive a lot of your experiences here in Canada and that's what you know is going to be your benchmark like that's what you're going to base on so for example your lifestyle is going to be significantly different if you and your spouse both are able to make good salaries here uh, especially in greater Toronto area that is a really uh, you know that has become almost like a requirement now to earn you know to have a decent lifestyle here now coming to the lifestyle here now what do I mean by lifestyle uh, let's first talk about uh, housing your your lifestyle or your quality of life in Canada depends a lot on housing even though there, are, there is some basic standard of living which is common across all of them uh, but your life is going to be very much dependent on uh, you know like the kind of housing kind of community you live in so I will I have broken down this into four categories uh, you have basement apartments where typically most of the immigrants start then comes uh, apartments then comes condominiums then comes uh, you know townhouses semi-detached and then comes detached houses now uh, in basement apartment when you start off you know your life uh, you know quality of life is is okay I mean I, I, have, I will not complain about that as well then apartments depending on the kind of neighborhood you choose um, it is little more better than the basement then comes uh, uh, you know condominiums uh, which which uh, which which are more modern apartments with modern amenities uh, which could be in city or you know anywhere basically uh, you know that is another part and then comes uh, townhouses houses which again is uh, better than condominiums so 
uh, you know your lifestyle really depends on the type of housing you're able to afford which again boils down to uh, you know like the salaries which you are making and what is your disposable income going to be because if let's say your your salary is not that great that means you will not be able to afford a decent housing uh, or you would be stuck in an apartment or you won't be able to buy your own house and things like that uh, because of uh, your disposable income and honestly things have become more difficult now uh, because uh, the cost of housing in Toronto has skyrocketed uh, literally skyrocketed not only uh, it's about the cost it's also about whether you can even buy a house because every house is going into a bidding war uh, you know it, it is being sold right now for at least uh, you know 10% over asking sometimes which is uh, insane I feel uh, but uh, that's what it is even the rents are being easily uh, if you want rent in a decent house or a decent apartments uh, it, it, it is very expensive so yeah that, that is a big challenge right now for anyone who is coming into Canada housing is the biggest challenge and it is basically going to consume a major chunk of your income and your lifestyle is going to be dependent on how much money you can eventually make because uh, if your major chunk of your uh, you know salary or income goes towards housing you will be left with very little uh, you know portion for doing other things uh, because for example even the car is very expensive because car is again a determinant of quality of life here if you are able to if you you need a car for sure so that you can go around you you can go around with your family otherwise you are going to be really constrained and that is going to really frustrate you because this is not like India or Mumbai where you can get uh, you know like an auto rickshaw or a taxi very quickly and you can go wherever you want and basically you know you can still survive without a car that's not the case here it's 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 pretty challenging without a car especially if you're not in a core downtown forget even in downtown you would need a car because you would basically travel to other parts of GTA for which you, if you want quicker access you need to buy a car uh, now there are people who basically do rental cars sometimes but honestly rental cars have become a big challenge as well uh, wherein you know the weekly rentals are sometimes weekend rentals are going to like six hundred dollars I recently saw for fall weekend, that is the Labor Week, uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, the rentals were close to $600 for three days for a sedan car. So, I mean, honestly, it doesn't make sense to basically rent a car unless you can get it for like 30, 40 bucks. But again, there is a lot of planning required and uh, you need to plan well ahead. Uh, which is sometimes impossible to do so you need to own a car car will set you back by almost 600 to 700 dollars and housing basically will set you back by 2200 to um, you know 2000 to 2200 so car plus housing itself will consume like close to 2800 2900 dollars and on top of that if you need groceries and other let's say a lot of other expenses on an average you can say three thousand five hundred four thousand dollars approximately that is basically what you need to survive paycheck to paycheck here in canada like literally four thousand dollars means that you got to be making forty five forty eight thousand dollars after taxes and uh, forty eight thousand dollars after taxes is almost equivalent to uh, i would say close to 70k before uh, 65 70k before taxes so think about it like you know if you are an individual who is making single income 65 to 70k literally you will be scrambling you will be running paycheck to paycheck now it totally now your lifestyle perspective will totally depend on what you were doing exactly in india if in india you are also struggling to meet your end meet your ends and here also you are struggling you will still like canada better than india because obviously there are other factors like you know quality of air quality of water whatever you want to talk about uh, so uh, you know if you are anyways uh, meeting your ends uh, in India and now you're doing the same thing in Canada like if, if you're living on single income in India and you are doing the same thing here in Canada in both the places you are struggling you will probably like Canada more but on the other hand let's assume that uh, you know you were doing really well in India and you are now coming here and suddenly running on paycheck to paycheck 
then you are going to start uh, questioning your uh, uh, decision on coming to Canada. So it, 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 it is going to depend on this comparison of India versus Canada, like how your life was in India versus how your life was in Canada. Now, uh, you know, like if you are basically uh, not doing so well in India, let's assume that you are living with your parents in India, you are making like 10 to 12 lakhs. Here you come to Canada, both husband, both the spouses get the job, like close to let's say 65k and uh, they are able to manage uh, expenses with one's income and the other income becomes savings then yes your life is going to be better here in Canada because obviously you are not doing exactly the same thing in India you were you were uh, let's say both the spouses were not working or uh, you know like whatever it may be but your life is going to be better here in uh, Canada because you are not doing that great in India but if you are making like very good money in uh, in India and you still make like 65k let's say your household income was 40 40 45 lakhs in India and now here in Canada you are making like you know 100k 130k I don't assume that it's going to be significantly different here in Canada and I'm only talking about the monetary factor here there are obviously a lot of other factors which come into play which I know uh, and which you would be interested to know as well uh, obviously if I talk about uh, other factors here um, like uh, you know quality of air that's one thing is way better than India or Bombay like I'm talking about Mumbai especially because uh, I am from Mumbai and uh, yeah the, the, it's significantly different if you have health issues related to air pollution it's going to be way better here and uh, yeah all those things it's much more organized you know traffic discipline etc etc a lot of things which people complain about these days so yeah um, it's, it's going to be completely driven off on your experience uh in india and what exactly happens to you in canada which means that it completely boils down to what exactly you can do here in canada so if you are an it professional and if you are already you know into it it's pretty much transferable you get into a bank if you're a programmer if you're a business analyst you try hard and get into a bank or start doing contracting you get into you know decent experience you start moving ahead in your career and then you slowly and steadily start you know like let's say getting a house for you and uh, you know you can you can basically get a house you can you can you can slowly progress in your life uh, on the other hand let's say you are in a profession which is not in a high demand in Canada then yes uh, it can get little challenging uh, so yeah that's where you have to clearly evaluate forget what canada is saying in the express entry program okay just forget that uh, just look at linkedin look at your profession look at what you can do in canada and evaluate like how much money you can eventually make just don't come here without any plans because that is going to back you off like because I have seen a lot of immigrants are coming and then they are realizing oh there is COVID will the government pay me money oh there is this will the government pay me money oh I am not able to get a job for six months or whatever see not getting a job still I agree because in spite of all this and all this analysis you might still not get a job but at least you knew that uh, okay this profession is in demand in Canada and this is what I can get paid for doing this and this is the skill set needed and I have those skill sets you need to have some understanding around this if you don't have understanding around this then you are going to falter uh, you know you are you're going to fail you need to do this analysis on what is your uh, you know uh, what is your skill set what 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 can you do in Canada or what are the professions in demand in Canada versus what or what is your profession whether that profession is in demand or not if that is not in demand does, can your skill sets be used in a field which is in demand or which which has probably a more scope here in Canada so you need to do that groundwork in today's day and age uh, with Google and all those things available 
uh, I don't think with social media and everything, it's not that difficult to find out what is in demand versus what is not in demand. Uh, so that that is that is very important. Um, and uh, some of the other advantages which I can talk about, like which which might be probably sometimes be overrated. People talk a lot about uh, you know Canadian passport. Getting a Canadian passport is going to change life and things like that well uh, i mean i would not completely agree with that as well today you know like uh, the most important thing for well, the only advantage i see for passport is travel so if you are a traveler you like to travel to different countries and uh, uh, you know you want to visit different places then yeah definitely the passport is going to be helpful but on the other hand uh, you know like if let's say you have canadian passport but you don't have even money to travel what are you going to do with the passport like it's going to just sit in your locker because even for you will just go to india and even for india you will have to surrender your passport and apply for oci and everything which is going to be again challenging so uh, technically your life is going to become more difficult if you don't you know if your purpose is just to travel to India and uh, and you cannot travel to any other place because obviously you don't have money or disposable income to do that travel because travel is an expensive thing especially if you go to Europe or any other place it's going to set you off by ten thousand dollars for a family eight thousand to ten thousand for a two-week vacation so you know these things are expensive so I know personally a lot of people who have Canadian passport but they are not able to travel for different different reasons and the only place they travel is uh, India now it has been like you know then what's the use of Canadian passport so don't get hung up on the Canadian passport thing because it's actually at the end of the day just a travel document nothing else like you know it's not going to be like a life changer or you you're not going to like uh, what do you call make a uh, hell lot of uh, money on Canadian passport so that's going to be the case like you're not going to be like a rock star with Canadian passport now in fact uh, and also a lot of people think who are especially coming from Middle East think that uh, you know if I get a Canadian passport uh, I can go back to Dubai and claim like three times more salary and I don't know if that even happens because at the end of the day you know whatever discrimination that is happening is not purely based on passport it is based on other factors which you know very well know of so you know don't get hung up on passport and all these things so the most important thing is you basically ensure that the profession which you are doing or the job uh, you know like uh, whatever you are doing has enough demand in Canada don't come here and start thinking oh my god I'm not getting a job do this analysis beforehand I would say that even before you decide to immigrate to Canada don't get carried away because uh, you know like Mr. XYZ is immigrating so I need to immigrate as well it is also a country at the end of the day yes it has got its advantages and disadvantages and you know I, I know I, I didn't talk about you know some of the nuances uh, on you know life here in Canada versus life here in India obviously a lot of these nuances are known like you know maid servants you know typical things which uh, you know which are available in India versus uh, it's not available in Canada and a lot of my friends actually a uh, few of my friends actually went back for these reasons including the education of their uh, child yeah according to them India was India is better and that's the feedback I'm getting even now that they are able to improve their child's education by actually going back to India. I don't know uh, how true is that, but it seems to be true because over here, you know, there is not a lot of choice available. Like if, if in the end you want very uh, a school which basically provides a lot of attention to your child, uh, then you will have to send your child to probably private school, which is again very expensive. So, in the end, it boils down to private school in India versus Canada. Then, yeah, India turns out to be better for your child's future. But again, this is a very subjective thing. A lot of people, uh, some people value education a lot. Some people don't value. I mean, like I'm not saying don't value, but they think that if their child is smart, he will definitely come up in life. And uh, you know, they think that he has to be more of street smart uh, rather than you know completely academia so again I don't want to debate about that but uh, yeah I have seen some friends go back to India just because of this reason and some other nuances which are in Canada like you know cost of living sometimes the cost of living is so high that people are not 
other reason is like a lot of people are not very successful here they don't get jobs they don't make the kind of income which is required like you know you are not born in canada that you have to live with whatever you have you cannot work in mcdonald's for life long just because someone is working so you know but yeah in that also like if someone is like doing a labor job in india which is in current day express entry program i don't think that is a possibility that someone who is doing a labor job in india and not educated can migrate to canada so most of the people i would say everyone who comes to canada is at least gra has a graduate degree and uh, you know like he is not uneducated so he cannot be in doing a labor job or he cannot if he has if he had he or she had a good career back in india someone cannot struggle here for very long time so uh, in that case they end up going back to india if required but I, I, you know i don't know of lot of people who have done that but you know but the problem is lot of people who do that don't actually publish their stories you only hear about success stories and things like that but you don't hear about failure stories or stories where people are telling that you know i did things did not work out for me in canada and that's the reason i'm going back so you know those things are not happening actually so you know if those stories come out then yeah we would know more about that but as of now uh, you know we don't have lot of these stories so bottom line what i'm trying to tell over here is life in india versus life in canada life in canada can be good if you have a good job good housing uh, you know basic amenities ability to go on vacation so with every each of this parameter your life in canada is going to get better on the other hand if you're not able to get a decent job you're you're uh, not able to get a decent housing car you are not able to go on vacations eventually you are going to be compromising in life now again it depends on whether you were anyways compromising on these things in india because your benchmark is going to be how your life was in india so uh, you know think about it this way what you have versus what you will get it it's just the difference which is going to make your life uh, you know like better in canada or worse in canada it all depends on what you have versus what you think you can get or what you get eventually so that's what is going to actually you know draw the path for this and uh, yeah i mean uh, so it's very important that uh, you actually do complete research on every aspect of canada like especially on jobs because as i told and i have mentioned before that is the single most factor which is going to determine your life in canada and that is what you are going to be basing your comparisons on what your job was in india versus what you are doing uh, career satisfaction is really important and if you are not satisfied in your job or your career and you think that you are not making enough money then you are going to be unhappy and uh, that's going to make you frustrated on the other hand let's say you were doing uh, you were frustrated in india and you end up making decent amount of money and uh, yeah then you would be very happy here in canada and that's what that's where i see majority of the people coming from india to canada that is people are you know inherently frustrated people don't are not happy with their jobs and salaries I, I recently spoke to someone who is still making around six lakhs in India. So for such individual, if he even makes sixty thousand dollars in Canada, that's it. His mission is accomplished. Like you know, where else? Which other country is currently giving you that opportunity, right? No other country is giving you that opportunity. Uh, you have to go as a student. You know, all those things are there. Again, getting a permanent residency is not very easy. So Canada is the only country in the world which is doing that right now. So yeah, that's why a lot of people want to move to Canada and want to take advantage of this situation. So uh, you know, like that's the whole take. So you know, coming back to my own life or my own take here in Canada. for past 10 years see you know people who immigrated before 2015 uh their life is little uh, you know like because the cost of living or cost of housing was not so high in canada the thing which was which has happened is cost of housing has increased leaps and bounds and the salaries have not increased proportionately so for people who came here before 2015 2014 uh you know the cost of housing let's say to cost to buy a house or 
you know the rent or whatever let's say it was 30 percent of their monthly disposable income now it has become 50 percent with the same kind of salary so i think uh, you know like since i came long time ago and i was able to buy a house and stuff so it was reasonably okay for me so you know that's the major difference for immigrants who are coming now i can't say exactly the same thing it really depends on what you exactly get here like what i'm trying to say over here is if you came like 10 years ago even with a mediocre job you could achieve a lot many your your the value for dollar was a lot more basically you know a, a dollar could go a long way especially in terms of housing because uh, if you want to buy your own house as well you have to get like down payment so more the cost of house more the down payment required more the down payment required more time it takes to accumulate that but simultaneously since uh, the rents have gone up uh, your your savings rate has gone down so it is like a two fold effect so <clears throat> So let's say that 10 years ago, if someone wanted to buy a house for $300,000 and uh, he required $30,000, all he had to do was to save like $2,000 for 15 months and he is done. Now the same house is costing like $700,000 and you are not even able to save $2,000 a month. You are only able to save $1,000 a month. So now you require 70 months for buying the same house. So you can think about it like you require five times Five, I mean like you know your affordability has gone down by almost five times gone down by so instead of 15 months now you require 70 months to buy the same house so that's what has happened I would say so new immigrants need to keep that in mind maybe this is especially for true for GT area so if you can think about anything other than GT area uh, where the cost of living is little bit lesser and you can still get a decent job then go for it just don't stick to GTA because your friend is coming to GTA GTA is saturated so think about other places and think about uh, you know like places where cost of living can be lesser and yet that's going to be determinant for your standard of living so yeah so basically that was uh, you know like my intro on life in india versus life in canada and what you know immigrants can expect uh, do subscribe to my uh, channel and uh, you know I, I do travel i do put travel videos and other kinds of videos so please subscribe to my channel and do like and share this video thank you